Ryder Cup. We'll do a we'll do a full full preview pod next week, but we can't not talk about it this week, especially Tom, given he thought it was this week. Look, uh, lockdowns lockdowns tough, guys. You sort of lose track of days and times and um, all sense Weeks. of reality. So I was just pretty pumped up for the Ryder Cup. Um, and then basically realised that it's actually next week, which makes a lot more sense. So that's okay. I've got some, got some early money on, and, and, and that's fine. <laughs> um, if I'm sure everyone listening to this podcast knows how the Ryder Cup works, but if you don't, 28 points up for grabs. You need 14 and a half points for a win. 14 all draw sees the current holders who are Europe hang on to retain the cup. Um, Few of the previous results, Europe won uh, their last time out in 2018 at Le Golf National, 17 and a half, 10 and a half, absolute ass kicking. Paul, what was your uh, your favourite memory from from France? Uh, I think it was just the way the Europeans just dominated. Um, we talking Mollywood? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was brilliant. Um, you could see that the the Europeans were, they were a team. Um, and it, it just seemed, it just seems to be a slightly different mindset between the Europeans and the Americans when it comes to uh, Ryder Cup golf or team golf. Um, and I think the Europeans sort of thrive on that. And the Americans at times seem to struggle with it. Um, the Americans, they need to be within cooey heading into the final day because they can usually pick up a number of points in the singles matches. They sort of, they would rate themselves head to head uh, when getting matched up against the Europeans on most matches. Um, so they need to be within cooey for that to happen. But if the Europeans get on a wee bit of a roll and get have some momentum heading into that final day, then that advantage sort of is dissipated slightly for the Americans. And I think we saw that uh, with that big victory by the Europeans. I just, um, and, and I think it was illustrated mostly with that Mollywood um, sort of combination, uh, Molinari and Fleetwood. You probably, if they were Americans, they probably wouldn't have made the Ryder Cup team. Um, but the fact that the, their combination worked so well just swung that back in the Europeans' favour so much that it was just too much for the Europeans to over, uh, for the Americans to overcome. So I just I always like uh, the Europeans, especially at home, because you know that crowd is going to be um, parochial, and they just feed off it. So with it being in, at Whistling Straits this season, surely the Americans have a, a, a much better chance. But I, I still like the fact that especially with the makeup of the American team. And of course, they've left Patrick Reed out. Um, the Europeans look more like a team as opposed to the Americans. Yeah. Uh, Tom, the Europeans have won nine of the last 11 overall, but the US have won three of the last five at home. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I guess like, I'm just trying to put my finger on why the Americans struggle so much with the team aspect of it because basically all of them would have gone through some of the college golfing system where there is sort of quite a strong sort of teams format and stuff as well, isn't there? Like, um, is it just basically the individuals are, are sort of bigger than that team environment? Yeah, it's, it's a strange one, isn't it? Yeah, I, I don't know if you guys saw um, Brooks Kepka did an interview with Golf Digest this week. Um, and had some some snippets of that interview that have been taken out and, and spread all over the internet like they always do but kind of gives you uh, an insight into the mind I guess of perhaps why they do struggle with the team game um, being asked about his Ryder Cup experience compared to a, his standard set schedule he says it's different. It's hectic. It's a bit odd, if I'm honest. And you don't want to say it. you don't want to say it's a bad week. Um, we're we're just so individualized, and everybody has their own routine and a different way of doing things. And now it's like, okay, you have to go to a team meeting or go and do this, go and do that. 
it's the opposite of what happens in a major week. Um, and then his uh, the next uh, question he got asked was about how you know at a major you're only worrying about yourself, but how does that translate uh, to ride a cup when it's a team game? And he's talking about how it's tough. You know, there are times when I'm like, I've won my match, I've done my job. What more do you want from me? I know you have to take responsibility for your shots. Uh, I had every week. Now somebody else hits a bad shot and left me in a bad spot. I know the holes are lost. <laughs> it's a new. It sounds like he hates it. Oh, you go from an individual sport all the time to a team sport one week of the year. It's so far from normal routine. It's such a strange mindset, eh? You'd think, especially a guy like Brooks who claims he was such a big sort of sports nut and basketball and everything else. You think you'd thrive on that sort of team aspect, and obviously the Europeans do, and guys like Spieth and Thomas do as well. But um, it's weird. I, I saw as well that um, after Captain America was left out, there were a few tweets saying, you know, why, you know, sort of arguing the case for him and that sort of thing, and saying it's a disgrace that he's been left out. Um, all of which were actually liked by by Captain America himself. So he's <laughs> obviously reading his own press. <laughs> <laughs> oh if there's one thing you can get behind it's patrick reed and his army of fake accounts on twitter it's mm. so good i, I um, think the, the just quick, the americans like for their, their captain's picks and picking all the rookies i think there is sort of quite a bit of um i think it's done intentionally right like these guys the young guys coming in to sort of look up to the old guys and, and with leaders like Spieth and Thomas sort of leading the charge and even if Brooks isn't as into it as, as the rest of them um I don't know I feel like with a home 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 crowd advantage and stuff as well there's no real excuse for the Americans not to get into it and sort of um maybe match the Europeans in terms of their sort of team dynamics and stuff yeah it's it's an interesting one um but yeah, I, I guess we as Kiwis probably don't understand how you don't get get into a team a team game, right? You don't, you know, we 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 grow up with it. We grow up with rugby and league and netball, whatever. Those are our sort of mainstay sports. So for these guys, well, for for Kepka in particular, to say you know it's he might struggle to get into it. I don't know. When you hear, oh, we've lost Paul. He's disappeared. Hopefully he comes back. We might just hold fire for a sec. He's not a team player either. Oh, he's not a team player. <laughs> <laughs> he's had a guts hook. Yeah. We'll, we'll, Brooks. we'll roll on until we'll see if he comes back. Um, You know, it's, Justin Thomas was asked, I think it was 2016 or 2018 at the start of the year, would you rather win a major or the Ryder Cup? And he said Ryder Cup. Yeah. That. That's the the mentality you need heading into this uh, event, and and that's the mentality the European teams seem to have every single year. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, I was going to get some thoughts uh, from each of us on potential pairings and, and who's going to play with who, but we might have to just pause. Uh, Rubes, note this time, and we'll we'll get Paul back on. Paul, oh, you're back. Uh, we we're just talking about uh, team game, team mentality, and you took off. Yeah. Um, we're going to start calling you Brooks from now on. Yeah, well, if you've seen my golf, you probably would anyway. <laughs> I've seen your golf, and Brooks is definitely not the first person that comes to mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying to uh, Tom, I want to have a quick look at the... Uh, the as I say we'll do a quick look at teams, but we'll do that next week. Um we'll get a few a few early crows, eh? Have a quick look quick look at the odds for the Ryder Cup next week. Um and and get some thoughts. This of course doesn't count. Uh you won't be held held to these come next week's preview. Um so Tom, I'll start with you. Uh who do you think is gonna win? I think the US are a dollar fifty favourites. Dollar, yeah, dollar fifty. Europe two seventy five. Where's your money yeah. going? Well, where's your money gone? <laughs> well, 
Yeah, the, I, I'm try, I tried to sort of find Europe, um, obviously, at the price and sort of I think you always want to, well, personally, I, I like to support Europe in, um, in the Ryder Cup. Um, but I think the USA look pretty strong, obviously. What have they got the, like out of the top is it 11 players in the world? They've got nine of them or, or something ridiculous like that. Um, the course is going to set up for them. Um, but $1. fifty is too short. I'm, I'm probably staying out of the overall market, to be fair. Um, and I was looking at some of the sort of players and, and guys with records and stuff, and obviously uh, – JT and, and Speed sort of stick out. I mean, I saw Bryson's at 850 for the US top point scorer, but I can't imagine Bryson's going to play in any, any of the foursomes. I mean, you imagine trying to play with him where you're hitting his second ball and you're in the rough, but you're 60 metres from the from the pin and you've never been there before in your life, or he's, he's trying to talk to you about wind velocity and, and all those other things. Um, <laughs> I was sort of pretty keen on either JT or Speed, and I think maybe Speed. Just, um, I think he's paying ten dollars for overall sort of combined top point scorer and, and eight dollars fifty for the US top point scorer. So I was pretty keen on that eight fifty for um, Spieth um, at at the course as well. I think he he came second when they had the PGA here in, in twenty fifteen. So um, yeah, I think I think he's set for a big a big tournament. He gets up for it. Um, that's that's the bit I've had so far. Um, is basically speed to be the top USA point scorer. Um, you look at the European side, Rahm's pretty short, but obviously for good reason. Um, but I'd be sort of more inclined to look someone like Hovland or um, even Sergio. I mean, he's got a great record and he's sort of the leader of that of that team in some respects. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's where my early sort of thoughts lie. In terms of the overall, like I said, I just... It's tricky. I might have a sentimental bet on Europe, um, but I think the states are sort of deserved favourite to the stage. Yeah, very, uh, very nice, very in depth there. It's like you do say, Speed has a very good record: seven, five, and two in Ryder Cups. Um, Paul, what about you? Where's your early money going at the moment? Oh, I'm very happy to take the two seventy five on the Europeans. I, I know you. Yeah. Just gave us that stat earlier on, earlier on um, that the United States have won what three of the last five that have been held in the states. Um, still, just like look at this. Uh, I like the mix of this European team. Um, I, I think Hovland's a great bet at eight fifty to be top European uh, point scorer. Very very happy to have a little stab at him. Um, and I don't mind Paul Casey either at eleven dollars. Uh, I, I think he'll be suited uh, at Whistling Straits, and, and depending on who he gets paired up with, I can see him picking up a number of points uh, in the foursomes and the four balls. Uh, so Hovland and Casey uh, to be top European point scorers uh, on the United States uh, side. You can't. It's very hard to go past someone like a Justin Thomas, who seems to have. He almost has a, a European mindset. Um, where he's all about uh, the team and, and can hold his own when it comes to the singles. So I do like Justin Thomas at $8 to be the top US point scorer. But, yep, I'm taking the 275 on Europe uh, to uh, what had, to be have the most points overall um, or to win the Ryder Cup. Yeah, nice. And Thomas, another one with a very good record. He only played at... Uh... France last time out, and he was 4-1-0 uh, in that. So very good record there. I'm probably sitting more with you, Paul, than I am. Uh, Tom, I'll, I'll happy, happily have a crack at the 275. Um, the team the team aspect is, I think, plays pretty pretty big. And, and like Paul said earlier, if the US can't get away early and get a few points up their sleeve in that first day, not so much the first session, but definitely that first day. If they're not up or not up by enough, then Europe, the Europeans will definitely give themselves a sniff and um, and come back with a bang. In terms of uh, point scorers, I like JT for the US, definitely. And I had Hovland circled too for the Europeans. Um, 
and I can't. Uh, Rory too. He's, he's one that gets up for these big team events. Very passionate person, um, and of course, Ian Poulter probably a, a dark horse um, when it comes to these formats. It'd be yeah, should be a lot more to talk about in terms of betting next week. Um, there'll be plenty of multi options and you know. Awesome power plays, bearings, power plays, it'll be all sorts. So I cannot wait for that. But um, we might we'll leave the Ryder Cup chat there, and we'll save the rest of it for next week. Uh, as I, I teased a couple of weeks ago, too, I'm working uh, on hopefully having a, a guest for next week, um, someone who has played team format uh, before. So someone who has won a significant international team trophy. Yes, I don't want to give too much away just in case. Okay, all he's right. He's not yeah. keen on coming on, but uh, yeah, we might have some international experience coming, possibly. Hopefully, fingers crossed. If you're listening, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I know it's almost like you're going cap in hand. I know he <laughs> listens. <laughs> um, <laughs>